Futurama is a big hit with some A-list celebrities out there. Known for its wacky storylines and scientific anomalies, the show clearly attracts a certain kind of viewer, and occasionally they happen to be famous. Of course, when you're famous, people will bend over backwards for you and even write you into their show. So who really wanted to time travel through space, and what demands did they have while doing so? In this list, we'll take a look at some of the guest appearances on the show and what was going on behind the scenes. Whether it be stars who wanted to appear on the show to boost their presidential campaign, or stars who wanted to make fun of themselves more, there have been some interesting requests and demands made while recording this hit animated series. And so with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 7 unusual demands made by guest stars on Futurama. Number 7. Larry Bird didn't want to be a part of the show. This cameo is so much more hilarious when you know the backstory. The episode follows the story of Leela trying to learn how to pitch for Blurns Ball, while seeking out the help of Hank Aaron the 24th, who actually did agree to voice his character. The Scooby-Doo spoof episode soon turns to Bird and his recorded message is repeatedly played during his cameo. One of the funnier entries on this list, this celeb barely spoke a word when recording for the series. His lines were in fact the same lines, just repeated. This is due to the fact that the star never actually agreed to be on the show, but rather called the producers and left a voice note which was adventurous used to voice the cartoon version of himself. In the voice note, the basketball player explains how his agent had sent him the script and he'd read through the lines and immediately decided he wanted to be no part of it. Groening obviously didn't catch that part of the message and featured the star in the episode. Number 6. George Takei wanted to be funnier George Takei has featured in quite a few episodes of Futurama over the years, but his first episode is perhaps one of the more iconic occasions the star has appeared. This episode was one that went down extremely well with the Futurama superfans and super nerds around the world. The episode, where no man has gone before, starts off with Fry learning that Star Trek has been banned on his home planet, Earth, for a few hundred years. In an attempt to right this wrong, he tracks down the actors from the show, and thus the greatest sci-fi animation baby is born. George Takei featured alongside a number of the original Star Trek cast members, including William Shatner, Nichelle Nichols, Walter Koenig, as well as Jonathan Frakes from The Next Generation. Takei was reportedly a great sport while filming and made very few demands besides having a more humorous character. He hadn't made much of a social media presence for himself, but after the episode started airing and everyone realised the wicked sense of humour he had, it all changed. Who would say no to a star asking to have more jokes added in? Number 5. Ad Rock Wanted to Record Lines Via Telephone this episode is one of the first times the show had guest appearances from well-known celebrities. In true Futurama style, the members of the Beastie Boys show up as heads in jars and perform a concert. Backstage, Leela Fry and Bender meet the band. This brief tangent is interrupted by the robot devil as he challenges Bender to a music off. The rest of the episode is consumed with Bender and his struggles as he grapples with his electricity addiction and takes on the robot devil voiced by Dan Castellaneta. The Beastie Boys do not return during the episode, much to the dismay of the fans. One of the stranger requests from a guest on the animated series, Beastie Boys Ad Rock claims that they accepted his request to do all of the recordings over the phone. The episode in which this band feature has only two of the band members' real voices. Mike D and Ad Rock were the only two available to do the voices, and so MCA had to be impersonated by Rock. Some have questioned his confession, stating that the sound quality was too good to be a phone call. Who knows, maybe they accepted the request because two out of the three is better than only one. Number 4. Mark Hamill demanded not to voice Bender Mark Hamill is one of the few guest stars who hasn't played themselves. Instead, this Star Wars actor featured as the rather bland Hanukkah zombie during the episode Bender's Big Score. While some believe this was a waste of a cameo, Hamill was reportedly happy to play any part in the series. His demands for the show actually came later on once the series had already been cancelled in 2013. When fans learned that the show would be renewed but without the help of the original voice of Bender, John DiMaggio, there was a major upset and public reaction from a number of celebs. Hamill tweeted out in support of the voice actor, requesting that he be returned to the show while reassuring fans that he would not be auditioning for the voice of fake Bender. Hamill is one of many to take a stand in support of the incredible voice actor, so hopefully Hulu will listen and up the payment so that everyone's favourite pissy robot can return to our screens, along with the rest of the much-loved team. Number 3. Stephen Hawking demanded to voice himself 
This one made everyone very happy, including the star himself. To have such an icon appear on the show was a real highlight for the sci-fi enthusiast behind the scenes, and to have him request to do the recording himself was the cherry on top. Unlike when he recorded for Family Guy, Hawking was actually in the studio for the recording of his lines when he featured on Futurama and The Simpsons. As his voice can be replicated on most computers, he wasn't actually needed for the recording, but he had made a close friend with Matt Groening, and the two agreed he would record it himself. Hawking was apparently a fan of the show, and was more than happy to have a little sci-fi fun with the team. He cameoed on the show twice in the episodes Anthology of Interest 1 and Reincarnation, in which he plays Dungeons and Dragons while trying to save the world, and shoots freeze beams while trying to distract two professors from a fight. Hawking was definitely at the top of the list for guest stars that had to appear on Futurama, and his legacy will live on through the animation and comedy that everyone has come to know and love. Number 2. Al Gore Demanded to be Made Fun Of Perhaps one of the sweetest scores Futurama has ever made in terms of guest stars, Al Gore voiced himself on the show even while preparing to run in the elections. Whether this did more harm than good is uncertain, but he definitely came away with a new audience of devoted supporters. Al was a fan of the show, but his family connection is what really sealed the deal. His daughter, Kristen Gore, was a writer for Futurama across seasons 3 and 4. While preparing for the role as himself, Al was a great sport and actually requested for more jokes to be put in that poke fun at things that he has said or done in the past. His line in the show, Invented the Environment, directly mocks how the politician likes to say he invented the internet. This move was most probably strictly political, as he wanted everyone to know he's one of the cool vice presidents who uses comedy to relate to potential supporters. Definitely one of the more standout guest appearances on the show, and it's amazing he returned so many times. Number 1. The Richard Nixon Library Demanded Promo Materials Despite debuting on TV screens across the world five years after the death of this former president, Futurama still managed to feature Richard Nixon on the show during the episode A Head in the Polls, where he uses Bender's body as his own while his head has been preserved in a jar. Although it wasn't his own voice, but rather the voice of Billy West, it still ruffled a few feathers at the Nixon family HQ. In the show, Nixon is played as himself, but with more of a nightmarish edge and his bold claims to be President of the Earth. With the villainous connotation surrounding this portrayal, the Richard Nixon Library got in contact with the show, and requested that he no longer be involved, as they did not like what the show was doing for his reputation. A few years later, the Richard Nixon Library had done a full 180, and actually requested that the creators provide them with some materials, so that they could be put on display during the Nixon in Popular Culture exhibition. A strange turnaround, but at least everyone's happy now, and the ex-president won't be rolling in his grave anymore. And that concludes our list. If you can think of anything that we missed, then do let us know in the comments below, and while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there at WhatCulture, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with WhatCulture, I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.